Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. Now, all right, I'm still a little bit sick. That's why my voice might be a little bit deeper sounding than usual. But I've gotten some comments saying that they like my deep voice. So I guess, it, so I guess instead of Dark Applier, I'm Nary. I'm, I'm this is Dark Nary, I guess. Not Dark Applier. I'm Dark Nary. This is Dark Nary's voice. <laughs> anyway, guys. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes of entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm send you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> I shuffle through a, through pieces of trepidation. I shuffle through a few pieces with trepidation, as though delicately handling fragile glass. There are small. There are pieces of all shapes and sizes here. How many hundreds of years worth of history am I holding in my hands? My history. Where do you find all this stuff? Many places. Ah, uh, yes, that clarifies things. I almost chuckle when I pull a worn-down tube of plastic out of the crate. Heh, <laughs> shampoo. Hmm? This, this, shampoo bottle. Hmm. I spin the thing around in my hands, almost able to read the read the begrimed label that's still stuck to the side. Winter, I think this is winter. Winter, um, sheen? Oh, that's uh, an A, not an E. Winter gleam, something eam, steam? You can read the words? I look up. Logan's head is turned to me curiously. <laughs> This is my mother tongue. Hmm. No one else can read it. Can you? No. Only the Ottomans can. You learned to speak Ilalian somewhere else? I don't remember. Hmm. Look at his head rolls lazily back, eyes going to the ceiling once again. He looks really tired. I watch him for a moment. I'm getting more curious about this stalwart beast dude that's taken me in. Who taught you to heal? Hmm? You know how to stitch up my cut. Who taught you to- who taught- who taught you that? I'm amused to see him yawn in a very canine fashion, his jaw stretching wide open and his tongue flexing between his teeth. It's cute. Groggily, he sits upright to face me. Mother. Your mother? Hmm. Taki said she never knew her parents. My father is a builder. He has moved to the Riptide clan. My mother is a healer. She lives with the Razorbacks. Did you ever see them? No. Any siblings? Hmm. Thirteen. You have thirteen siblings? Thirteen sisters. Wow. Do you ever see them? I have never met them. How come? I should have. Well, yeah, they're your family. He stares at me. Family stick together? No. No? They do not. Ugh, regardless of what I say, he always ends up being grouchy. Is it my fault or is it him? <clears throat> nah, it's definitely him. I will sleep. Okay, me too. Good. We will visit the hot springs in the morning. Logan stretches himself up and reaches for the corner of the lodge again. It's almost pitch black, save for the dull glow of the heater. Logan flops back onto his animal skin bed, the mattress spring springing lightly from his from his weight. I try to catch sight of him in the dark. I just can just make out his silhouette. Looks like he sleeps on his back. His chest is rising and falling steadily. His bed looks comfy. With a defeated sigh, I pull the blankets around my shoulders and try to curl up into a ball and shut my eyes. <sighs> I'm a fucking genius. Hey, the F word is no is a no is a no no word, mister. I figured it out. The perfect test for you. Fear of death, a sense of self, morality, spirituality. Whoa, bite, talk sense. Those would be the parameters. <clears throat> for the test to see if you're really human. It's a series of questions that will determine whether you're an android or a human. That's stupid. No, it isn't. It is! How are we supposed to test for morality? You mean test that it exists, or see what morals I have? I'll show you. Brace yourself for my genius. It should be good. Oh, that's good coffee. Ah, pumpkin cold brew. Alright. <clears throat> Alex, if I paid you money to kick an innocent kitten in the face, would you do it? Uh, no. Well, there you go. You have morals. Congratulations. You're human. Oh, come on! There's more to having a moral compass than that. What about your other parameters? I mean, a sense of self? What even is that? Your perception of the collective characteristics that define you. My perception of myself probably isn't accurate. Surely nobody knows you better than you. Not really. Stupid people don't know don't know that they're stupid. Look, Bite, your test, uh, your test won't work. The things that make you human can't just be quantified and ticked off a list. Well... Fear of death is pretty straightforward. It's just rational self-preservation. Fear isn't always rational. The fear of death is always rational. It's death. 
If you looked over the edge of a cliff, you'd be afraid of falling, right? Well, yeah, but that's obvious. We humans are pretty squishy. We often explode to showers of blood, gore, and teeth when you drop us from any reasonable height. Just let me try to test my... Just let me try to test my questions on you. Fight. I'll prove that you're human after all. Ugh, fine. Okay, all you have to do is answer my questions. Your answers will determine the results. Am, am I going to be kicking more hypothetical kittens in the face? <sniffs> Sorry, guys. Ugh, trying not to be sick. Question one. The following sentence is true. The previous sentence is false. Which of these two sentences is true? I think sentence is false. What? Want me to repeat it? No, it's stupid. You're just talking bollocks. It's a paradox. It's stupid, Bite. Fine. Next question. Is the difference between a fish purely that purely that one of its legs are both the same? What? That's even stupider than the last question. What's your answer, though? It doesn't even make sense. Next question. Okay, okay. I wasn't originally going to get a brain transplant, but then I changed my mind. Is that it? Yes. That's not a question. Well, what's your response? You didn't ask me anything. I didn't say they were all going to be questions. What's your response? You know what? This is dumb. You're dumb. Let me ask you dumb things. We're testing you here, not me. But this is stupid. I could ask you the same questions and you'd easily pass for human too. But we already know I'm just an AI. There's more to you than that and you damn well know it. Loken is more of a robot than you. What are you saying? You act like a human. Ha! Huh. Well, I'm not. Am I not? Ha! Huh. Don't be silly, I'm... Wait, you think I'm human? What? No, I said you act like one. I'm saying you're... I mean, are you sure you don't have real feelings? You... Hmm. Nah, I'm just an AI, okay? A clever one. With a personality matrix. Are you just going to blame that? That's all it is. I'm just advanced. Like, really advanced, I think. She's under their foot now, isn't it? Shut up. I know what I am. Go ahead and ask your dumb question. Alright. I thought time flies like an arrow, but fruit flies like a banana. Ah! I thought time only flies when you're having fun. Isn't that the expression? Just answer it. Are you trying to catch me out? My code can spot a pun easy enough. Told you I was advanced. This conversation is giving me a headache. Alright, do you believe in free will? Yes. I don't see what choice I have in the matter. You could refuse to make any choices. Refusing is a choice. The absence of choice isn't a choice. Yes, it is. This conversation is giving me a headache. Let's see. Statement is false. Was well, the preceding statement true? Huh, really? You went for that? You asked me the same thing. And now we're both confused and kittens are getting kicked in the face. Only hypothetical kittens. I still feel sorry for them. Alright, last one. What do you get if you what do you get if it a joke with a rhetorical question? A headache. You don't have a head. I have the concept of a head. And I can simulate the sensation of owning one. And consequently, the pain of a headache. This conversation is giving me a headache. Aw, I was having fun. I think we can only talk complete bullshit for so long before I've had enough. Fine. Fine. It's nearly time to wake up anyway. What's the plan today? Carry on waiting for this Aeon guy to show up, I guess. <laughs> One second, guys. Okay, I'm back. <sighs> Did not sleep very well last night. I mean, I'm okay though. I can get by with very little sleep just fine. Whatever you do, don't tell Aeon about me. Ugh, I really wish I could tell someone. Hey, you're not completely alone. You've got me. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not the same though. Ah, I can understand that. I am only an AI. I just. I wish I could tell Loken. Oh? Because you. Cut it out! You do, though, huh? No, I said he was hot, that's it. Hey, Alex. What? Alex. What? Alex. Huh? Wake up. What? Wake up. It is morning. He's knelt down by my side, cruelly shaking me awake by the shoulder. Uh, what, what time is it? Morning. But what time? Morning. I groan. So you don't have a clock? He stares at me. You tell the time with? No. Get up. 
Lucan steps away from me and stands to his full height, arms folded, staring, staring me down. I feel tiny next to him. I groggily sit upright, expecting a rush of pain from my lacerated side to hit me. Thankfully, all I feel is a faint tingle. That Donnelly stuff really works. Hmm. I can barely feel any pain. Okay, get up. As chatty as ever. We begin our training today. We begin your training today. But I'm injured. We must wash the wound in the hot spring. Get up. It's almost funny how much of an asshole he is. Do you ever say things you like, you know, like, you know, please and thank you? He just scowls at me, turning to fetch something from one of his cabinets, clearly not in a joking mood. I get up to my feet, stretching my neck and rubbing my face. It's still cold as ever in here, though I'm getting used to it and used to it after two days. I'm a little stiff from having slept on the floor, but I'm not going to complain. The blankets Loken got me keep me warm, which is really what matters. Will I get a proper bed at some point? I'd rather not just sleep on Loken's floor forever. Before I have even properly found my footing, Loken thrusts a chunk of a chunk of beef jerky into my hands. Uh, I'll eat later, thanks. Now he looks suspicious. You are not hungry? Nah, had a good meal at the village. That was yesterday. Eat. Told you, humans don't eat much. I drop the food into my bedding and change the subject before we can argue back. Where are the hot springs then? Are they far? They are not. I will check your wound. Lucan takes a decisive step towards me, reaching for the hem of my hoodie and lifts it up again. This time, however, he hesitates. I will check your wound... I smile softly. I'm touched that he's trying to respect my personal space after yesterday. I lift up my, I lift up my top for him to see. Loken's right. It probably does need to be washed. There are still bloodstains sticking to my skin from two days ago. The hound inspects the cut carefully, his paws hovering above the skin. He presses lightly into my side with his thumbs. Ah! There's pain. Not really, it just tickled. You are healing. Here. He promptly thrusts a small twig and a wooden cup into my hands. I take them with a bemused frown and peer up into the cup. It contains a gray, viscous liquid that reeks like pungent oil. I scrunch my face up in protest of the stench and frown, confused, at the twig in my other hand. Uh, what are these for? Teeth. His ears twitch as he gives me as I give him a confused stare. You are okay? Huh. This is a twig. Yes. You're aware that this is a twig. It's from an olive tree. Right. What's in the cup? Salt, alum, and vinegar. It is good. So what am I supposed to do with these? Oh, come on, you cannot be that thick-headed. Jesus. Loken looks really taken aback. You have never washed your teeth? No, I have just... No, I know I have, just with a stick. And this is supposed to be mouthwash? I lift, to my, I lift it to my nose again and sniff it again. Ah, that's potent. Loken doesn't look too impressed. Even children do this. I'm not from here, Loken. He exhales grumpily. Fine, I will show you. Follow me. Before heading towards the door, he grabs his satchel and swings it over his shoulder. Shuddering against the cold, I follow him outside with my makeshift toothbrush and, wa and mouthwash in hand. It feels warmer today. This is good for the farmers. Now, watch and copy. He's not seriously going to brush his teeth with a twig, is he? Oh, wow, he is. I watch with amazement as he chews the tip of the stick. Chew until it's like this. He shows me his twig. The tip has become frayed like bristles. This is what it comes to, Alex. Eating sticks. I reluctantly bite the tip of the twig until it looks the same as his. It's deeply unpleasant, like munching on straw. Loken takes his cup of mouthwash and pours it, onto, pours it into his maw, washing it around without it so much as a wince. He motions that I should do the same. His cheeks ballooned outward comically. With a groan of resignation, I pour the grotesque concoction into my mouth. This is, I feared, it is emasculatingly vile. Ugh! Mmm. 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 -hmm. How does he put? The, how does he put up with this every day? When he spits the mixture out onto the ground, I rapidly do the same. Ugh! What flavor is that? Vodka and puke? It is better than bleeding gums. I'm not a black runner. The first salvage I'm going to invoke my right for is a decent Zephyr toothbrush. I already have one. I meant a clean one. I continue working the bristled twig around my teeth. Come, we will go to the hot spring. We continue picking at our teeth with our brushing sticks as I follow him away from the lodge. Tonight we will remove the stitches. Cool. Cool? Yeah, cool. He's looking at me with a blank expression. Oh, I mean, it's good. It's a Zephyr saying, I guess. Cool, it means good. Humans are strange. Why are we strange? You have no fur. So? 
And you are small. It is strange. Well, you're strange for you're strange to me too. He scowls contemptuously at me. I am not strange. Hilkin walks away before I can answer. Ugh, this attitude again. Hilkin hands me a leather skin water a leather skin water bag to wash my mouth out with as we walk. I do so gladly, relieved relieved to relieved, relieved to free to be free from the taste of licking a forest floor. I gaze at the musculature of his upper back, flexing beneath his pelt as he walks. Bite was right. In spite of a few differences, his anatomy isn't too far off being human. A big human, that is. His thick arctic fur is bristling gently in the cold bit in the cold in the bitter cold breeze, his tail swaying with his step. I gaze at the hefty bulk of his shoulders, watching his pelt shimmer gracefully over the contour of his body. I guess there's no point denying it. I definitely find him physically attractive, even if even if he's kind of an asshole. Not that I'm suggesting I want something to happen. That would be weird, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm his acolyte, and we're a different species. He probably isn't gay, anyway. You are okay. Loken's crystal gaze has locked onto mine as we walk. He looks concerned. I'm fine. Your face is red. Oh, God damn it! Yeah, it's the cold. The cold turns your face red. Just, it's how my skin reacts to the wind. Hmm. He hums thoughtfully. You're really not cold? I am not cold. Having fur must be nice. The husky just shrugs his shoulders at me and carries on walking. I get the feeling he'd rather just, I'd rather he, I get the feeling he'd rather we just walk in silence. Ooh, nice. We continue marching through the valley, but I'm determined not to let the ch idle chatter die out this time. How long have you lived up here? Since I became a black runner. And how long is that? 21 years. How old are you? He blinks thoughtfully. I do not know. Seriously? It is hard to keep track. I have at least 30 years and some more than that. Have you lived alone the whole time? His stride gets momentarily slower. Yes. No. Yes. And then out of nowhere he glares at me. I am not lonely. I never said you were? Good, I am not. Okay. His pace quickens, ending the conversation once again. I scowl after him. I scowl after him. I'm trying just I'm just trying to be friendly. He comes in to, he comes to a dip in the mountainous valley, and my eyes boggle at the sight before me. A beautiful crystal clear spring of water. Bubbling water sits nestled amidst the gentle hills and thick forestry. It sparkles in the bright sunlight. Wisps of gentle steam amble upwards into the breeze. Even as I approach the spring, I can feel the pleasant heat from the water glazing my face. This is... wow! Hmm. Others do not come here. Why not? Because, he grimaces, because I am a black runner. So? They believe we are tainted. I frown. The taint of demons. They will not use this spring. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. I've got... I've got work prep to do. In very little time to do it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.